Okay, I have some questions here to answer, so let's go through. Asfan Diar asks, how drawing relates to design? How can one improve his sense of design from drawing? Um, I don't think there is much of a how there. You can always become more thoughtful about how you're thinking about design, but drawing will naturally improve your sense of design as long as you're being thoughtful. Um, and drawing is the most direct way to improve your design. Um, design is a very amorphous term. Uh, if you asked a hundred artists what they mean by design, you would get a hundred different definitions. So you're going to have your own personal design sense. Um, but in general, the way I like to think about it, and you know, here's my uh, answer that would be different from the hundred others, uh, design is basically the argument you can make about the choices you made in your drawing. All right, pretty high level, I know, but it's like, to me, design doesn't actually come down to, oh, it's these shapes because these shapes are good and here's why these shapes are better, blah, 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 no. All of that is, you'll hear people talk about that, like, oh, fast shapes are naturally more dynamic. Oh, these shapes work for this situation. That's all cultural conditioning, right? That's all, sure, maybe that conditioning has been around for 4,000 years, but it's still arbitrary. It's still based on um, how we feel about things, the designs that serve us in particular ways, um, and just, it, it, it works for us, you know? But um, what's more important there is that the people who are claiming those things are making an argument and they make a good one. That's design. It's like, how do you think about what you are presenting and what you are drawing? So that's very broad. Um, but to go back to your question, the raw material that you need in order to improve your thinking about that is a knowledge of how things actually look. And when I say things, I mean the real world, mostly, right? Like you can waste your time trying to figure it out by dissecting the pre-digested artworks of others, right? But it's going, to, it's going to take three times as long because you're always getting an answer straight from them, right? Both are necessary, right? You need to look at real life and at other people's art. But real life and the real things that are designed in the world around you, right? The real things that you use... Uh, I don't just mean, you know, your laptop, your phone, the chairs that you sit in, your furniture, but even like a garden, right? Gardens are designed. Uh, how is this natural space being designed by a landscaper to produce a feeling of uh, orderliness, cleanliness, of natural connection? Like everything, everything um, is designed in the real world around you, unless you're in a truly wild space, right? Unless you're like... Uh, Unless you're like backpacking in untouched wilderness, everything around you is designed. Even on any moderately traveled hiking trail, you know, on the most meta level, um, the trail underneath your feet and the breaking of the foliage directly proximal to you is designed by humans, right? And, and certainly so if you're on a hiking trail that has anything like stone steps added or anything like that. So look at the world around you. Almost everything around you is designed to some degree. And so how, how do you break that down? How do you actually learn how that's done? You think it through, you ask questions, you do research, and you draw it. You draw it because drawing demands the most from you to understand something. When you draw something, you have to create the illusion of it, which is the most demanding task, right? If you were to sculpt something, for example, you would have to, it would be extremely demanding. You would have to figure out a lot about it, but you would always be spared the pain of having to make the form look like it occupies space correctly, right? Like if you sculpt something, the form is handled for you. It's actually present in a space. Sorry to all the sculptors out there that I just offended. But if you draw it, you have to understand it completely. You need to not just understand what it means, how it works, and its form. You also need to understand how it presents to the eye and what that means for the person who is seeing it. So 
drawing something really brings everything down to brass tacks, the absolute most foundational element of anything that you're trying to understand and demands the most from you. So let me just recap my answer because I know I want, you know, I'm just winging this. So it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going a little bit uh, all over the place, but to recap my answer as succinctly as I can, um, when you draw and drawing is the, is the right way to try to learn design, um, when you draw things, be thoughtful about why you are choosing to draw them in a particular way, right? Um, and then follow your nose, you know, research, learn things, break things down, and uh, search for your own answers. Thank you for the question. Uh, fuck boy with a P asks, is 2020 the year of alien invasion? Um, doesn't seem likely, but wouldn't that be interesting? You know, sure, we're, we'll get vaporized and fed to a deathless machine that has traversed the galaxy for aeons, seeking every little quanta of organic life to feed its tireless hunger. But while we are being integrated into that cosmic structure of death, we will also get to enjoy the existential pleasure of learning something true about ourselves, right? It's very difficult to, these days, learn new, true things, things that you now know pretty solid are true, like really true, um, that have a substantial impact. Uh, and I think one of the big ones that's probably waiting for us is to find out that there is life that is not us. Life elsewhere in the universe. Um, and not as an abstract, not as a likelihood, not as a probability, not as what I have right now, which is just like a certainty based on just the statistical truth of the scale of the universe, but to actually like see it, have a head-on collision with it and be like, oh, like that will always be different. That will always be a different impact. What an amazing thing it would be as we have our insides uh, melted and we are returned to the protoplasmic liquid from which we are born and become the i core of life for uh, an undying sentient hive mind that lives only for the absorption of other creatures. Look at that chipmunk. He looks very happy. All right, thanks for the question, fuck boy. Let's go to the next one. Anthony Respicia asks, how do you motivate yourself on finding new things to draw? And what are your tips on transforming art to a more narrative approach in order for you to tell a story? It's a tough question. Um, you know, motivation is really, motivation can't be at the top of your list for things that make you draw. You know, motivation comes and goes. Inspiration comes and goes. Uh, things are always going to wax and wane in your life. Things are cyclical. So I don't really know that motivation could be at the top of your list. You know, you instead want to build, like anything, you want to build a habit, right? You know this is something you want to do. You know that you enjoy this. So you just build the habit and you sit with some regularity and you do it, uh, whether it feels great at that moment or not. Usually, if you draw for like, for me, it's like 40 minutes. Uh, no matter how much resistance I'm feeling, if I can hit the 40 minute mark, I'm sort of over it. And then I'm just drawing. Uh, and on good days, it's before that. Uh, on what tips, what are your tips on transforming art to a more narrative approach in order for you to tell a story? This is a really interesting question. Uh, and I, a lot of people seem to have it, uh, and a lot of people seem to be suffering from not asking it. Uh, and unfortunately, there's no easy answer. Um, I do think, if I can just give my personal opinion, um, you need to go live. I know that sucks to hear because it's like, oh, well, I got to just, you know, that's a non-answer. It's like, no, not really. Um, for you to really be 
motivated by a narrative or a story of your own to such a scale that you will actually go through the heart-wrenching uh, difficulty, pain, and, um, and struggle, uh, you know, in the beginning, right? You eventually learn that all of that is unnecessary. But in the beginning, if you're going to go through all of that, um, you need to you need a really strong emotional push to do that, to tell that story, to convey that message. And as far as I'm concerned, the only way to get that sustainably is to have gone through extremely powerful energetic experiences in your day to day life in your real life, you know? You need to have had extremely deep conversations with people that you love. You have to have lost people that you care about. You have to have regained your uh, positivity and your outlook on life after going through times of darkness. Like, you need to just live these intense experiences that are on the table for absolutely everybody and that none of us will avoid. And living these things will, for most people, produce eventually an experience uh, powerful enough to make them want to share what they learned from it. And it will be very personal and you will care about it and that will get you through it. Thanks for the question. Stardust Observer asks, when you encounter a part of your drawing that wasn't what you hoped for, how would you usually go about it? And how can you work the habit to fix them? How severe said part would have to be for you to go as far back as the... Let me reread that. How severe said part would have to be for you to go as far back as the drawing's timeline, reworking other aspects that might hinder everything? Um, me personally, I don't assume something is uh, a mistake or not what I wanted for that part of the drawing. Um just off of thinking that once, right? I like to sit with it. So I just move on, right? I like to keep going. Um, that's not for everybody, right? People have different kinds of personalities and your personality gets into your art process. For some people, the idea that you're going to just let something go is uh, completely, uh, it doesn't work at all with their sort of control-oriented personality. And that's fine for them. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to correct your mistakes before you move to the next step. Um, but for me, I, I have too many times encountered the fact that um, if I go back and change this now, it might only compound my commitment to that area. And when I move on to the next steps, right, if I'm following like a very linear progression in the drawing, I may find that the next things that I add to the drawing make that part look worse. And then because I've already corrected it two or three times, I'm only going to be even more resistant to correcting it a fourth or fifth, right? So this can quickly snowball. Um, and really there is no, you can never quite get a true marker of, ah, now it's truly right, right? Especially if you work um, with a very delineated staged process, right? If you like to do all of your line work before adding your values or your colors, um, that line work is only being assessed in relationship to itself, to other lines, and you almost inevitably find that you want to make changes once you add the values, because the values reveal what is incorrect about the form that is being contained by those lines, and then you want to edit the lines, because when you edit the internal form, you're changing the silhouette, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, now that I've thought it through a bit, yeah, a more succinct answer. Uh, I like to let mistakes sit for a little bit because I know that correcting them immediately is not necessarily the best answer. Um, but as I move on in a piece and I've gained more certainty about what the piece is, especially once I'm actually looking at everything that makes the piece, right? If it's going to be a value drawing, once I'm actually looking at the values, if it's going to be a painting, once I'm actually looking at the color field, then I'm more open to, um, to making those corrections because now I have much more data to base those corrections on. I would be very resistant to getting caught up in correcting just line work when that's all I have, but I know the piece is going to be a rendered drawing. 
I should say that last part made me realize that that uh, don't go by what I'm don't try to adopt my process. You know, I'm an advanced artist. I've been doing this for a long time. I'm comfortable working without the safety net of lines and just like moving, you know, kind of playing around with rendering. It's like that. It depends on your skill level. But um, don't get so caught up in your errors. Focus on your drawing. We put a lot as artists, we tend to put a lot of energy into our into the negative side of what we're doing. We tend to put a lot of energy into uh, the parts we're messing up. And we are highly conditioned to not put energy into the things that we're doing right and our excitement for the piece that we're making. So if you're not used to doing that, I would put your energy there instead. Thanks, Stardust Observer. Blue Blazaga asks, any advice on gaining followers, viewers, subscribers? I've been trying, but I can't seem to gain followers. Well, Blue, I would advise you, and this might not be what you want to hear, to not worry about it so much. Really, like um, almost universally, if you redirect all of that energy into instead wanting to do the the best work that you can for yourself, like instead of thinking about what will make people hit follow, if you instead direct all of your energy into what would I hit follow on and make that my work, right? Like I often think about um, something that I often use to sort of correct myself is um, I'll sit and I'll imagine, I've done this tons of times, I'll be like, what email would I have to get that, that the subject says X artist is releasing X book or product or something like that? what would the subject line of that email have to be? And then the what's contained in the body, what does the product look like? That would make me just go, oh my God. And then turn to my wife and go, holy crap, you won't believe who what X just put out. I can't, I'm buying it right now. Like I, this is gonna be so great. I've been waiting for this since I was 13. Like what would it, what would that need to be for me to have that reaction? And then I invented it and it's not real and then I just make it, right? Like I, I just ask what would absolutely get me the most excited and I focus on that. Um, but you are asking someone who, you know, I don't have 300,000 followers anywhere, you know? I think at, at, you know, right now on Instagram, I have like something like 14.7 or 14.8. Uh, K followers. It's like, that's baby numbers. I'm happy to admit that. I don't care. I'm very proud. I don't lose a wink of sleep over it because I am truly, truly not bullshit. I'm not bullshitting right now. I'm not just saying this, right? I am truly proud of every damn subscriber because I don't follow trends with my work. Like I'm literally just doing what I want to do. And it's not even like, I'm not even concerned about like, is this as ambitious as I want to be? No, it's just like, I just post whatever I could do in that free time that I had around work and everything like that. And I am humbled and so appreciative of the fact that every, every one of those subscribers that I have is there because they like that. They're not there because they like that I fit into a niche or that I, serve up something that they find familiar or that um or that it's or that it's anything like that. I have done the work up front to know that I'm just doing what I want to do with as little outside conditioning as I can manage and um and people follow for that. People, you know, like the work uh even though it's that way and that's a uh, I, you know, I can't go back. You know, I wouldn't have it any other way. I know I could increase my follower count or <laughs> I could increase my follower count by like committing a week to like doing fan art or something like that, right? Like I know I could do that. You know, I've dabbled in it before, but I just, I, I can't go back. Like I'm not interested in that. I, I, I really gain so much more um, satisfaction from just every follower that I get from my own unstructured weirdness, right? And uh, 
there, I would wish that on my worst enemies. So I certainly wish it for you. I would advise you to look for something like that. Um, I, I know that when you feel like that stuff is really important for you on the journey right now, like I got to get more popular, I got to get followers, I got to get viewers, I got to get subscribers. I know how frustrating that can feel. And I certainly know how frustrating an answer like the one I just gave could feel. And I'm just begging you, like, believe me, that ain't it. You know, that the followers, it can seem like the followers and everything are everything. And it's just, it's not, you know, I know people who have 80 times the followers of me who, um, you know, they're unsatisfied or they're just kind of wilted in their work or, or God help them. They don't, you know, they, they can't make a living off their work. And uh, it, it, there's no, the results of that are different for everybody. So don't put all your eggs in that basket, you know, spruce up your, your own intimate internal situation first, and then move out into the world with that. All right. I hope that helped. And that is all of the questions I have in this little block. So uh, thanks for the question, guys. I hope that was thankful. And if anyone has any questions, you know, throw them in the comments for this video, and uh, I will come back to them for the next Q&A. Take care.